Mopar people. Welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. I'm going to show you very quickly how I'm going to start the 65 Cornet. I was finishing an exhaust video. I just put full exhaust under this car. And you can't finish an exhaust video without putting a sound clip of the car running or you'll get thrown under the bus. So let me show you what I got here. So please ignore this giant pile of wiring here. I'm going to tidy all that up later. This engine's going to come back out. I've got a 727 transmission hooked up, a flywheel bolted to this for a standard transmission. And there's no, obviously there's no converter in this transmission. It's an FBO box that is hard mounted to the intake temporarily and their Pertronics coil. I'll show you how to hook that stuff up later, different video. But before I do any of that, I wanted to show you how I'm gonna start this car. Um, my oil pump drive in, I have primed the system. You can see my gauge over there by Barney. And so yeah, if you were in this process, this is kind of what you could do if you were starting an engine for the first time. This engine's cam has been broken in, so I don't have to sit here and run this engine and break the cam in. Obviously there's no radiator. I just want to see if it will start, hear the exhaust for just 30 seconds and cut it off. This is a good carburetor. I know it's a good carburetor. Uh, the distributor is a good distributor I had in this engine before. It has an FBO plate in it. With all that being said, Let's push forward. Okay, I've dropped my distributor in. It is medium tight. I can still turn it by hand. I uh, just pointed my uh, vacuum advance that way. See, it has a limiter plate, FBO, and very light springs. And I went ahead and plugged it in while it's there, but it's all the way engaged. So what I'm gonna do now, I've got my number one plug out. I'm gonna take my screwdriver and jump this starter relay across with my finger over that hole. Ignore that ugly header. I'm going to wrap it later. So jump this over while my finger's in the hole and we'll listen for it to pour the poop. Did you hear it? Let's try it again. Right there. We stop exactly right there. Don't do anything. It's all a little sparking happening over here. So what I'm gonna do, see my timing mark is past the zero. I'm going to back that timing mark up to the 10, okay? So I know this distributor has uh, only 10 degrees of advance built in. So I will back this up to the 10 that is before the zero. There you are. And I'm going to lock the distributor down. I'm gonna show you that process. A little bit. To the 10, right there. Zoom in and show you. So I'm just barely past the 10, that's fine. Now I'm on it, what I'm going to do, some people will pull the distributor out again and they would uh, drop the oil pump intermediate shaft in so that it perfectly clocks the rotor to where it points to number one. I think they did that in the factory to uh, speed up the assembly process. I'm not going to do that. What I like to look for, let's get in here to our magnetic pickup. Let me pop that out of the way. There we go. See our magnetic pickup right here. It's pretty well in line. I'll bring it around just a little bit. So the relationship with that ear and the magnetic pickup there matters. If it's going one way or the other, it's retar uh, retarding or advancing. So I like to line mine right up on it. Drop my rotor back on, be sure it's secure. There's my new distributor cap. We're going to drop this down on here and my wires are already kind of situated half and half. See the tab on that side matches the tab on the cap. We drop her down. Don't latch it yet, just look. So, if we were to latch right there, I believe this wire would be our number one. It's where the rotor is pointing. See it? One more time. Okay. So, keep that in mind. If you need to mark it, mark it. If not, don't. Okay, I just plug my wires on both sides very quickly. Number one's in the front, you already know that. And you probably know the firing order. So I'll put number one here. 
Now I need number eight. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these other dudes off. Just get them out of the way. And this is clockwise. So after number one, we'll go with eight. I put it, I should be able to feel it. There it is. Eight, these are kind of stretched. I will change them later. So like several things. One, eight. Four. Coming up to number three. One, eight, four, three. Number six. Easy. Five. Come on. I feel like it's good to show y'all this in real time, too. It's not just all about the magic of TV, YouTube, whatever you want to call it. Five. Seven would live, give us our last one, final one left on this side. And on down there. If I unloom that, those will ride a little nicer in there. And that leaves me number two, which is my front plug over here. That is free. There we go. I did stick the spark plug back in, so that was a good idea. I gotta hook up a coil wire from there to my coil. So here's what's changed since you last saw this. Ignore these spaghetti of wiring here. I put the radiator in, both hoses on, full of water, uh, everything's sealed up. I do not have any gaskets on these headers. And y'all may call me crazy. I'm not gonna run it very long. Um, I didn't wanna waste my gaskets because after they're tightened and pulled up nice, ignore that header too, I'm gonna to wrap it. Um, once they're pulled up tight, it basically destroys the gasket and they're no good anymore. So I just, I have them bolted, uh, very snug, not over tightened, but the engine's gonna come out anyway. I'm gonna clean all this stuff up. It'll go back in. But for today, I wanna get this thing going. So I did my spark plug trick. Uh, I rolled her back to 10 before, top dead center. If you're looking at the distributor and you want to advance the timing, you would go counterclockwise. So if you ever are confused, you look for your vacuum advance and it'll be pointing at the way to advance it. Because what it does is suck or pull the magnetic pickup inside closer to it. So I went ahead Set her right back like it was. Um, I do have the fuel line hooked up. So I got five gallons of gas in the car. Oil pressure gauge is hooked up. And my timing light's hooked up. So what I did after that, I gave me another screw here on my carburetor. And uh, per the instructions on the uh, FBO box, you got to have a hot wire to the positive side of the coil as well. So it'll be very easy to hook into this old style ballast but I'm not using the key or anything. I didn't want to make any of those wires hot right now. Uh, so my battery cable's on. This is the one that goes hot side of the coil. This will be the one that goes to ignition. So I can do this in real time. Hook her there. Red light is on. Obviously you wouldn't mount this in a real car like this, but let's see if she fires off. And if she does, I'm gonna jump and grab my timing light and we'll see where the timing's at. Show up on camera very 
well. We're somewhere around 14. So if you listen to the engine, it's going to idle up as I advance it. I'd like to go to about 18. you with your first start i'm excited to have the coronet running now i like i said i still have to yank this back out of here but uh no leaks no issues so i get it pulled out and go back to work um thank you all for watching i'll catch you next time